Welcome to Ultimate DIYer, where you learn to be your own contractor. In today's episode, we're going to replace an old Toto toilet with a new Toto Drake system. The old toilet's sliding around, and it's also not flushing correctly. The whole top on this unit isn't even the correct unit. Somebody's replaced it somewhere along the way. So follow along while I replace this unit step by step. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to unbolt the toilet from the floor. You're going to find a plastic cap on each side of the toilet if it's still there. Sometimes those are gone. And then you're going to remove those nuts. Now a trick that I do is I'll use an open end to loosen the nuts and then I will use a deep socket to turn by hand. You can use the wrench but you generally don't need it. Just having the socket makes it a lot easier and quicker to get it off. So I remove the lid, get it out of my way, and I go ahead and take the seat loose and put that aside. Totos do not give you a new seat. You have to buy them, so I set it aside for the customer. So to get the water out of the unit, I go ahead and flush it once after I've shut the water line off so that a lot of the water will empty the tank, and then I'll use my wet back and I'll vac the water out of the tank and out of the bowl. So anytime I change out a unit, I always put a brand new water line on. In this case, I'm going to undo the water line at the wall and just leave the water line connected to the toilet and carry the whole thing out as one piece. So at this point, I go ahead and put the new hose on and have it ready so when I set the toilet in place, it's a pretty simple process to hook it back to the water. I don't have to reach behind the toilet to set it up. So now I'm going to go ahead and assemble the unit and I usually do that outside of the bathroom, put everything together and then carry it in, especially a Toto because it has extra nuts that hold the uh, tank to the base and you'll find it's usually a little easier to do that out in the open than to try to fight behind it when, when you have limited space. So a couple things that are actually different about a Toto versus say a Delta or an American Standard or any of your other traditional toilets that we deal with is that it will not come with the wax ring, it does not come with a seat, and it does not come with the flange bolts that hold it down. You're going to have to buy those separate. One of the things to pay attention to as I pull the bowl out and then the tank is pay close attention to all the stamping and the numbers. Toto marks their products very well. That's how I know the tank that is on the other unit was not the original tank. Someone replaced it because the stamps were not there. So the wax ring that you see in the picture on the far right did not come in the box. I bought that separate and had it setting there ready to go. So the package you're going to see me pull out here is full of all the bolts and nuts that actually hold the tank to the actual bolt that's not flange bolts. It also comes with an instruction manual. I will say that the Toto is an extremely well-made toilet. They've been around since the early 1900s and they really started picking up their game around 1980 and on up into the present day. So 
So at this point, before you start assembling the tank to the actual bowl, I would suggest getting some pliers and tightening up the nuts on the bottom of the tank. You'll thank me for this later because sometimes at the factory, they're not all the way tight. So it's a good idea just to make double sure so you don't have a problem later and have to pull everything back apart again. And I'm not real sure why, but they always put plastic around the little lever, I guess, to keep it from getting scratched. Sometimes you have to fight with it to get the actual plastic off. You're going to see a black pipe in the tank going into a white PVC pipe. You want to make sure that that is actually spraying inside of the white PVC pipe. I see a lot of people pull that out of there thinking that it's placed wrong. It's supposed to do that. I cut a piece of cardboard box off of the box that the unit came in and I'll place it on the bowl to keep it from getting scratched up at this. So install your rubber gasket with the tapered end facing down. Make sure that it's on good, you'll hear it kind of click around the pipe. Place the rubber washer on each one of the two long bolts that came with the unit. You're going to find that there's four nuts because this is a double nut system to help lock the water in. You'll place one bolt in each one of the two holes that you can see from the bottom here, but you'll do that from inside the tank. So now you're going to use a washer and one of the nuts on each one of these bolts. That's going to actually pull that rubber washer inside down nice and tight so water can't leak through those holes. Now be extremely careful anytime you're using tools on porcelain. Be sure you tighten one side and then move to the other side tight and then back and forth nice and even and do not over tighten or you'll crack the porcelain. Okay, so as soon as you have those nuts tightened, you're going to check that rubber gasket one more time and then you're going to place the tank on top of the bowl with the bolts going through the two holes. Once you've got those bolts through there, you're going to use your next set of washers and the two nuts and you're going to tighten those on. The same way you did the upper ones, you're going to go from side to side being very careful. Now you're going to notice that I'm using a socket and a wrench here. I would just use a small open end if you haven't done a lot of toilets just to make sure that you don't over tighten and crack that porcelain. I've done so many of them that I know pretty much exactly how far I can go without cracking. So once you get those nuts nice and tight and you, you don't feel any movement in the tank, it's time to go ahead and carry it and put it in place. Now you'll notice I already have my wax ring on. I tend to put my wax rings on the floor first. And then very gently I put the toilet down making sure that the bolts are lined up in the holes. You don't want to slide across it because you'll end up moving your wax ring out of place. Then I'll put the nuts on the bolts lightly because I'm going to try to use leveling either washers or in a lot of cases I'll use wedges. I'm going to try washers on this one but I may end up having to pull it back up because it seems to be out of level quite a bit. Now when you're actually putting the nuts on there's going to be a white cap that you usually put on first and helps protect the porcelain so that you can't crank down on it too hard and snap that porcelain. But that being said, you definitely can still break it, so be cautious. The cap also has a double purpose. It helps hold the white cap that goes over the top of the bolts in place. Now 
Now this works just like everything else on the toilet. You're going to tighten on the right, then you're going to tighten on the left, and then go back to the right again. You're going to keep doing that until the toilet is nice and firm on the floor, and you'll keep moving either your washers or your wedges in between. The very final thing I do at the end of the project is I'll come back and I'll put a bead of caulk all the way around. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook the water line up. It's usually just done by hand. It's pretty simple. You don't want to put tools on and crank down too hard on that. And then I'll turn the water on it so I can do a test. One thing I will say is I do love the way the Toto has the seams at the top of the toilet where the water comes out. It's supposed to really help keep the toilet clean where you don't have to do as much work. You'll notice in this shot what I was talking about of how the water squirts down the white tube. That's the way it's supposed to be. So the last thing you'll check before putting on the toilet seat and the lid is make sure that there's no leaks. So the floor was extremely unlevel and I didn't like the way the toilet set so I decided to go ahead and take all the water out, pull everything back out and redo the bolts. Now this flange is actually an extension flange, that's why it looks so weird. So what I decided to do is take and put nuts on that and tighten it down really tight so that it couldn't go anywhere. I think that was part of the problem he had on the older toilet where it was sliding. And then instead of putting back the wax ring, I opted for putting on a, I installed a new waxless ring. Be sure you use a rag or something to block the waistline. It not only keeps the gases from coming up where you're having to breathe them, but it also keeps you from losing parts and tools down the drain. This is an actual picture up above of the ring that we're actually gonna use, the waxless ring and it's supposed to work if you're below floor level, above floor level. It even has another adapter piece if you're way down below that'll go on top. So I think they're awesome and they make a lot less mess. And if you're having to pull the toilet on and off again to make sure you get it right, it's great because you don't have to keep putting wax rings on. So now it's just the same process as before. We're gonna put the toilet on. This time I'm gonna use a little bit better wedge to try to wedge it down because it's got such large gaps. Kind of like what I'm showing you in the picture right now, those wedges are great. But we're gonna do that and then we're gonna bolt it down the same way, just tightening from right to left till we get it right again. And then I'm going to uh, let, fill it with water again and we'll install the seat and it'll be pretty much done. The only other thing I'll need to do is put some caulk around it and the simple fact that it is such a big gap, you can see it in the picture there. I'm gonna probably have to do that over two days, but I've got other projects I'm working on at this customer's uh, house, so I'll probably do it in two different levels, and I'll trim off the little wedges with a multi-tool so that they're nice and even when everything's done. So you can kind of see now what it looks like with the toilet seat attached. Not a bad looking unit, and they're extremely reliable.